What's up guys, in this video I wanna talk about five things that have transformed me and my life in the last 45 days. I'm gonna hop right into it shortly, but I do wanna say that right off the back, three of the five things that I have learned in the last 45 days have come directly from one person. That one person happens to be someone I don't even know. It happens to be a YouTuber called Cody Sanchez. I just hopped on YouTube one night and I was trying to do research on how to buy businesses. And that was what I typed in YouTube, how to buy a business, and her video was the first one that popped up. Uh, little did I know that was gonna take me into a deep hole of watching her videos repeatedly for a long time but she has a lot of good stuff to say and some of the things I learned while watching her videos have actually changed the trajectory of my business in just a span of a few weeks I want to hop right into the first one which is that you can't become really wealthy with solopreneurship and I don't even think that it's just really wealthy I think that it's just to survive with solopreneurship is actually really difficult If you don't know what solopreneurship is it's basically this idea that like one person can run a million dollar company no employees or no anything, just one guy running the show. This is not something that's overly new of a concept to me because when it comes to businesses, my objective has always been how do I leverage myself out of this situation? How do I alleviate this work? And how do I hire the next person to fill this role? But the one area in my life that I have not lived by those principles has been YouTube. There's a lot of big YouTubers or people that maybe don't get that big that phase out because they never hire a team. You're doing the videography and the video editing and doing all the publishing and scheduling everything out. And doing all that work is quite overwhelming. Which is one of my reasons why I think YouTube has been so hard for me to grow. It's because I have an actual business to run and then I try to do YouTube on top of that. And a big principle I think when it comes to making money that a lot of people talk about is that you need to stick in one lane. You need to stick in one lane and grow one thing really big, not seven things all at once. But the truth is I'm not really in a phase in my life where I'm ready to take on an entire new startup, which is kind of the way I view YouTube, that it is an entire new startup. Now with that said, I'm not done doing YouTube. I still want to do YouTube and I'm still going to continue to do YouTube, but I'm going to continue to take it slow and push out content because I think that what I have to say holds value and I think that you'll think the same. And I'm not done with the YouTube discussion because that leads me into the second thing that I actually did learn watching a Cody Sanchez video, which is something called Ikigai. If you've never heard of Ikigai, it's a four circle Venn diagram where one is what are you good at, what do you get paid for, what does the world need, and what do you love. There's four circles and there's one center where all four of those things meet. That is what your Ikigai is or your passion in life or what you're destined to do. And I did this and I realized that the only thing that fit in that circle for me was YouTube. I love making videos and I know the world needs business entertainment videos and you can get paid for doing this type of work. Now on the good side, I don't think I'm that great at it yet because since I don't have a team and I'm doing everything myself, but I know that will come with time because you're never good in the beginning and that's part of life. And I know this may sound kind of contradictory, but I don't always think that your passion is what you should lean into when it comes to business. The most profitable and the best businesses sometimes aren't sexy. They're, they're pretty boring businesses. I run a commercial cleaning company. My, my company cleans dirt and scrubs toilets. It's not sexy. It's actually the complete opposite, but it, what, it's what pays the bills and to me is what the most scalable business that I have is. YouTube to me is a way to put what I've learned in the business world and in life out into a video that somebody can consume and learn from. I love the educational aspect of YouTube that I can come and watch a video like Cody Sanchez that's something that can completely change my life and it only takes nine minutes in a video. So my plan is to continue to grow that commercial painting company and as that company grows, the more it grows, the more I can lean into doing something like YouTube as I get out of positions like doing all the sales and the bids and everything. Because my objective is to own companies, not be a slave to them. So I wanna continue to build while lowering my workload. The third thing that I learned in a Cody Sanchez video was seller financing. And in particular, seller financing when you, it comes to buying a business. So I've always learned about seller financing in the realm of real estate and not necessarily business. And that shift was kind of interesting for me realizing that you could do that. It was something I always kind of knew about, but then when I sat down and thought about the numbers, how you could buy a cash flowing asset at a price. You get a business seller financing, and you pay that loan out every month and deduct it from the profits of the business that's already cash flowing. It only took me nine days from watching a YouTube video on how to buy a business to sitting at a table negotiating a deal. I already own a commercial cleaning company and now I'm in negotiations to buy a laundromat and that to me, just they marry quite well. When I learned about seller financing, it really took me back to the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey and I thought about, is this the path that I should have gone? Should I have bought a business and not gone through all the troubles and trials and tribulations of building something from scratch? And I think that's a double-edged sword because I know I can buy a business now and I'm capable of growing that business and I'm more confident in doing that because I've started the pinwheel. I've started a company that's successful and now I'm ready to go into the next one. And I think that how hard it was to build a business makes me respect it more. And the lessons I learned, even though they were tougher, were probably more ingrained in me. 
but maybe I didn't have to go through all that and I could have just bought a business. But that's a question that I don't have an answer to yet and which direction would I point somebody in if I was gonna tell them where to go? And maybe it's because I don't have enough experience buying businesses yet, but it is definitely the direction that I'm gonna go in. The other reason this is really transformational is that seller financing, you don't need to go get a loan. And oftentimes you don't even need money down. So if you don't have any money and you want to start a business, like this is definitely an option that you could look at. So this has really pivoted the paradigm in which I do my cleaning company now as well, because I'm trying to grow it out of the smaller town that I am in, which is Kalamazoo, Michigan, which is about 200,000 people. If you go north, there's Grand Rapids, it's like 250,000 people. And there's different ways you can grow a company like this. You could do franchising, which really cuts the margins, and but you could do it really fast probably. It's the, uh, the shortcut, the entrepreneurial shortcut way, but I don't think it's the right way it's the way that will make you less money in the long run or you can build out slowly from where you're at which is the trajectory that we've currently been on but when I discovered summer of seller financing I discovered a new method of building a company which is okay well what if I go to Grand Rapids which is the neighboring large city and buy a commercial cleaning company there buy it rebrand it as my company and now I have two offices and that office if I if I buy a company that's big enough it already has a manager it has employees it has good contracts and I've bypassed all the difficult phases of becoming into a new area and to me I realized that that was the direction we needed to go that I can not only just grow my company but I can grow it exponentially with this method so the next steps in my commercial cleaning company are buying other commercial cleaning companies rebranding them as CT cleaners which is my company and growing it that way obviously we will continue to do our own marketing and everything like that to continue to get the traffic that we are getting now but that's the direction that I decided I want to go to and it was extremely pivoting when I learned this and then the fourth thing that I've learned that's changed me is all about cold calls I think like a lot of things in life cold calls are really you know daunting and scary in the beginning but then you get through that phase and you realize that it's really not that bad but this isn't just all about cold calls although I do think that cold calls in most industries is the best way of getting business. It's more about the omni-channel marketing approach because I've talked about this a lot, but I haven't always implemented it. Sometimes I've gotten a little lazy on the prospecting and I've slowed down the marketing, but I read a book called Fanatical Prospecting. It's actually my second time ever reading it, but the first time I read it, I didn't really have a company yet and it wasn't really practical for my everyday life. And it talks about just cold calling in general and how to do it and how to do sales really in general. It talks about sales as always a numbers game and you gotta track your numbers and there's you gotta make cold calls and he thinks it's the best way of getting business. And I haven't disagreed with anything he said if you're scared about doing cold calls just pick up the phone and start dialing I promise you after a while it gets so much less daunting so if you're a marketer please don't just stick with one Avenue you need to do emails you need to do Google ads you need to do Google my business you need to cold cold calls you need to do Facebook ads you need to do all those things and the more of those things that you're doing the better your marketing really will be all right, well, let's talk about number five, which is more of a personal development and health type thing. But there's this new app called Yucca or Yucca. I don't know how to say it, but it's really cool. You can scan all the food that you buy in a grocery store or all those products that you use on your skin, like lotions and shampoos or toothpaste, any like health or beauty type product. But it's completely changed the view I've had on food. If you're like me, you kind of always realize that there's really bad things and there's really bad products in our food, especially if you live in America. But how do you know what is bad and what is not? Especially when you read a label on the back and you don't know what all these things are. I mean, with some of them, like citric acid, for example, like I didn't know if that was good or bad for me. I know now that it's pretty natural. I've always ate pretty healthy, but there are certain foods that I didn't realize how bad they were for me while I was eating them. It's like bagels. I buy bagels from the store and they're like plain bagels and I thought they were fine for me, but then I scanned them and I realized they have nine additives in them and three of them are hazardous. Now I knew bread wasn't healthy, but I didn't know that what they were putting in it was also giving me cancer or causing me to have ADD or whatever it was. So if you haven't got that app yet, it's a little white icon with a carrot on it. It's spelled Y-U-K-A. And I, I, th I really recommend going around your house and scanning all the products that you have. I promise you it's really educational and I think that this is one of the first times I feel like it's given the common man the fighting knowledge of pushing back against these large organizations that feed us bullshit and are killing us. That was it for me today. This is my Ikigai, so I promise to continue to push out content for you. I'm sorry there's been a 45 day delay but I promise I do not intend to keep have that happen in the future I want to grow this slowly um, I want to do it the right way and I do plan on getting team members eventually but right now I don't want to push that too hard and I don't want to strain myself financially trying to grow another startup while I already have a good company going and I want to continue to grow that have a good day